everyone, welcome back for part two of this awesome family folio. Hey guys, so we are back. So we have our two folios. We are going to, I did say I was going to do the cover first, but I think I might actually cover the pages first, just because I want to get some decorating on. And I'm considering doing exactly the same because I have two sheets of each paper. So I'm, I'm contemplating doing that, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> so I will quickly recap the papers with you. So we have the tree with the green. We have the floral display with this sort of patterned one. They are exactly the same in the 12 by 12. We have this stripy one with the framed piece. I love that piece. That is gorgeous. We have a green butterfly background with a flowered butterfly background. Then we have this scripty one with the watercolour panel and then these cutter parts. And I think the cutter parts are absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to cover one on screen with you because I think I'm going to do exactly the same for the other one. However, what I want to do is I want to try and see if I have a patterned paper that will work with these colours. So I'm just going to pull out some of the coloured pieces. And I'm just going to have a quick look to see if I have a stripe or a polka dot or something that will match these colours. Okay, so I have this very pale green, which I think sort of complements all of them in my stash. I honestly couldn't tell you where I got this. Um, it's just A4. Um, I don't know where I got it. I apologise. It was probably in a multi-pack from either Amazon or... The range or the works. Sorry, it's just in my paper um, divider. I don't have the name. I apologise. I then also have uh, this darker green from this pack, which is from the range. Coloured cardboard. So you've got the colours and these. And I'm going to be a bit pedantic here because the colours don't match. Maybe they do for the pink, purple, red, yellow and orange, but the blues and greens do not match because if I get out a blue, so we've got blue, we've got dark green, we've got light green, okay? And then you have patterns to match. There's the blue. There's the dark green. Yeah. Here's the light green. They do not match and it upsets me because these colours are beautiful. These colours are a bit... Meh. I don't know how else to word it. That, that noise just seemed to sum it all up for me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the, uh, the patterned versions. However, I have got a couple of them out just in case I want to use them. Sorry, that was probably very loud. So I do have, I'm going to put the blue away. So this is definitely going on my front page. And I think the other one I'm going to use, I like this, but the other one I'm going to use on our centre page as well. So I'm going to set the two eight by eights of this size to the side so that I'm not touching them. Those are staying away ready for the other sections so let's pop one over here for now and we will start so we've got this big front panel which i would like to put a nice nice bit of patterned paper on in fact i'm going to cut these out bear with me i'll be right back okay so i think on these front panels we're going to have this nice frame so that we can put mum dad whoever's side of the family 
with a picture of the parent. I think that would look really nice. Um, and then I'm going to use this watercolour one as a top and bottom strip. I couldn't think of the words then. Been a long day. So let me remind myself. Hmm. This piece is nine and three quarters. So this is eight. So one and three quarters. Half brain. Sorry, give me a second. So half. Seven eighths. Two seven eighths strips, but we also need a gap. Am I going to leave a gap? Yeah, we do. So, two six eighths strips. So, just over, just, yeah, three quarters. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. I need to change this blade because it is pilling paper and I don't like it. So two three quarter strips. I think the dots would be nice somewhere else. So I'm gonna go from this end. So we'll do three quarters. Mm -hmm. Oh look at that, that's a nice straight line. I'm so easily pleased, aren't I? Two three quarter length strips. this out like so so we can put this on now these are eight across yes okay, so these need to come down a smidge I think we're literally cutting off a sliver a sliver each side does that so nicely I love new blades I know it sounds really silly I love new blades there we go two little slippers I really like that stripey look I think they're going to be too thin to use anywhere but I like them Let's have a check. Do we have a nice black edge? Yes, we do. Lovely. Let's measure these so they are the same width. So, that goes there. So we have one down the bottom like so. One here. And then one up here. Perfect, I will stick that on and come back to you. Okie dokie, so there is our first page and I think that is beautiful, I love that. So next up, let me move one to the side because you don't need to see that one. So I'm just going to leave that as it is, we're not going to have anything extra on there. Then we lift up and we have a large flap here and a large flap here. Now these are the ones that are going to take the most amount of paper. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to leave the top for now because I might do a sort of patchwork effect on it. And we're going to look at this one. And I'm going to grab the 12 by 12 sheets. And we're going to see what we like for this page. Now this one is probably, depending on the way it is set up, going to have a fair amount of pictures on it. So I'm considering using this. If I cut this in half to six, and then I can have a strip either side, that works. What have we got on the back of that one? Because I really, yeah, I'm not fussed about that pattern particularly. In the eight by eight, it looked nicer because it is a smaller pattern. Perfect. That's the next step. I don't know 
why I picked it up both. I only need one because I'm cutting it in half. <laughs> My brain sometimes doesn't work. quarters to there. We want a gap. So we want to go down to there. Trim that off because that is a nice piece. Cut in half at six. Let me just check this is actually 12 because the eight isn't exactly eight. Uh, yeah so it is exactly 12 so I've cut it in half at six so we can use it. And then obviously because our page is wider than six, I'm going to choose a complementary paper. I ended up going with the green butterflies and I'm just going to cut an inch strip or three quarters of an inch strip for each side. And then I measured them to fit and I could tell here that my tape was going to show because I'd put my tape on diagonally. I should have put it on straight. It's my own fault. So I've just moved the tape out of the way, stuck our strips on and then stuck our piece on the middle. And I just love how beautiful this page is. I really love the center paper with the flowers along the bottom. I just think it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of paper. Please remember to put glue on your tape like I do here, because otherwise the tape will stick and you won't be able to wiggle your paper to get it in the right place. Okie dokie, so we have got our front page done and then our second page. And I really like that these have different flowers. Now, tell me I'm wrong if you think I'm wrong, but in my mind, I would say this would be nice for mum's family. This would be nice for dad's family. You know, dad's mum, dad, mum's mum. Like, they are different, but they're the same. So you're going to get the symmetry in across both um, folios, but there's going to be differences, which I like. I really like. Hey guys, so we are back and we're going to move on to the inside of our piece. I just... I am in love with this paper, I just have to say. I think it is stunning. So, let's move on out of the way because we only need one in front of us. So we have got our front piece. We've left the top, then we've done this piece. And now, I think what we will do is we will start with these centre pieces. So I'm just going to tuck all of these behind. Let's take the... Uh, all to four elements out so if we tuck this behind like so and it will lie flat and we're going to start with these little panels so on the back we're going to have one large piece and then on the inside we're not going to have much and then on the outside so what am I going to do for this inside piece I think we're going to use the 12 by 12s for this because I would like it to be one solid piece. So we will do the butterflies for this. So this piece measures nine and seven eighths. Sorry, that was really hard to see. Let me get some printer paper because then we can see things a bit easier. Right, let me just confirm that that is what I saw. Yes, nine and seven eighths by... seven and a quarter. Nine and seven eighths by seven and a quarter. Nine and seven eighths by seven and a quarter. So we will come across, so seven and a quarter is the page, so we will come to seven and seven, nine and seven eighths, nine and seven eighths come down again, a quarter of an inch to be, yep. Sorry, just checking that I've got that correct. Do a dry fit to check that it is correct and giving us a nice black edge, which it is. Great. 
gorgeous. Let's stick this on. So here is our piece. I'm now going to choose a couple of bits to go on here. And I'm thinking we want something. Let's grab that back here. It's going to go nicely with this design, but it isn't going to overpower it. I'm liking the butterflies. I think we what did we use? We used the butterflies for the edge of that piece. So I think our butterflies would look good. Okay, so while I was cutting down the piece of paper for these flaps, I decided I wanted to use this gorgeous stripey piece. And I thought I wanted two sets of vertical stripes and two sets of horizontal stripes. I thought that'd be a nice contrast. So I was cutting down my pieces, I had the three done, and then to do my final one, I did not have a piece with the stripes going in the right direction. Um, I can, can you see there, I have it, but it's got the name of the paper collection on the bottom, the stripe that we'd normally cut off. So what I did was I looked through my scraps, and I found another piece that matched the stripes, and I figured out how much space I needed, it was about just over half an inch, I think it was like, six, I don't know, just a sixteenth over. So I cut down an extra strip and then I just stuck it over the strip that shows the name of the paper. And once it's stuck on there, you really, really can't tell. And this way you just get to use all your bits and pieces. You just sometimes have to be a little bit creative. <laughs> Chair has no arm! <sighs> right. Hey guys. Let's move on to our next step. What I have done, I have pre-chosen and pre-cut some pieces so that I can build it with you have a bit of chat see how you all are but you don't have to watch me cutting everything and I don't have to do hundreds of hours of editing so we have our front page and for our top part here I have decided to create three little photo mats so that is what we are going to start with we are going to remove I'm going to throw that out the back of my box which isn't really helpful <laughs> right. so I hope everybody is well I hope everybody did have a good Christmas and that you know you were safe and, and happy and able to see people it was a very weird Christmas this year I'm sure you will agree um, but yes 2021 now I'm hoping I am filming this in advance I am hoping by now that the vaccine is uh, being rolled out sensibly to people and that people are starting to get vaccinated and that I myself may even have had my vaccine no, I think that's a bit hopeful um, but maybe I know when my vaccine's going to be so I just cut these down what I did was I used a piece of um, printer paper, cut it down to the size I wanted with the borders that I wanted to make sure that it was nice and straight and fit nicely. I then folded that in half, cut it in half, trimmed off that score line that I had folded and then did the same with the bottom half so that it split into two. If you have a look up at this video, when I did my boy mini album, you can see in there how I did it. And I'm going to go through it again now with you. So then we have these smaller pieces on here. And yes, so I hope you're all doing well. Please let me know in the comments how you are doing, how you are finding things, um, and what you have been up to. I hope it has been a pleasant 
time for you all. I hope everyone is doing well. I, as of filming this, I am working from home, which is wonderful to be productive again, to be teaching, albeit through a screen, I'm still teaching and it is wonderful. I am absolutely loving being able to teach. Um, I miss it so much when I'm not at work. I just, I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else in my life ever as a career career. Um, obviously, if I could craft and get paid for it, I would, don't get me wrong. But um, outside of my uh, dream job, I do do my dream job. I love teaching. It is the best thing in the world for me is teaching and working with kids and I love it so yes it's nice to be back productive doing that and I'm hoping at some point in the future to return to the actual classroom right so we have our little photo mats on I then picked out this love piece to go in the center I'm only going to stick it down in the middle and then on the other one I have one that says let me find the larger version for you so this is the love and then I also used, there it is, the Joy in the other one. So very similar pieces, but differences because each side of our folio is having slight differences. Now this one I'm going to put down with my art glitter glue because we don't need this to be really, thanks glue. We don't need this to be a sort of structurally strong glue as I'm doing with the Kalau. This is more just getting it stuck and held securely because it's going to be left open and what that means is you're going to be able to stick photos behind it it was pretty much the center so it's just going to be stuck down in that central point and just grab my no ruler hello there we go don't know how i lose a ruler so easily without moving look at that it was straight go me Five points to me. I should probably give myself more than five points actually because I don't very often stick things down straight. <laughs> so this is left open, which means that you can tuck a photo behind it here and here and at the top here. Excellent. So now when we open it up, we have a calming back to this one. This one is our nice front image with our strips, which I love. Down the bottom here. So we have our waterfall here and what I did was I cut quarter inch strips of the pale green and just laid it around including figuring out a slot for this which basically meant I just cut that bit in half and put a bit above and a bit below. I didn't want you to watch me do that, you can stick down a quarter of an inch strip, I mean, you know. I do want to cover these or at least some of these but we need to look at what we've got left over first. I also then cut down this piece which looks like it's too small, but I wanted it to hide behind this and not be seen. So we're gonna to need to push that up a little bit and not be seen because I didn't want it to stick out past this piece. So let's pop this on. Oh, I do like that side though. Oh no. I think it's got to be that side. <laughs> Changing my mind as I go. Welcome to me. Um, so just pop that on so I'm still kind of aiming in my head to kind of be like the um oh, that side needs to be a tiny bit there we go um to be kind of like a lighter more airy side so like using the whiter flowers here um, on the next bit you'll see the whiter flowers I've used the, the lighter version of the wording so the joy is darker the background to the joy is slightly darker um, so I've kind of I'm not doing masculine and feminine I'm just doing a darker and a lighter side so that there is a little bit of differentiation between the sides that's all partly because of the size of these this folio and the amount of paper that I have so the where these are wider 
than six inches, I cannot just cut the sheet in half and use it on both. So some of them I have two of each sheet, which is great, and some of them I don't because of the way I cut it. And that's fine, it works perfectly for me. So now, when we close our staggered waterfall, perfect. Let's move on to these middle pieces. So I'm just gonna close those up behind so we can lay it a little bit flatter. So for this one, you saw me do the butterfly back piece for this and we are going to cover our um, flips and flops. So we're going to have, just checking what I was doing. So we're going to have our stripes on this top one and that's going to be mirrored on the other side. And then on the other side, we have this piece and I think I might do the same or do I do the lighter version again? Yeah, I think that lighter version looks nice. And then I just have this pale green for the backs. So I have stuck those down. Again, I've used the light green as a complementary colour. And then for the back here, I have created this pale green for the back of the pocket. We're gonna put stuff in it so you don't need to see it. And then I have this strip which I have used for both pockets and in one pocket I have focused on these light flowers and on the other pocket I cut it this way and focused on the darker flowers. So it just gives you that extra extra sort of light dark differentiation I guess. So I'm just going to stick these on. I really really love how this paper collection works so well together. It's so easy to use all the pieces. So I've just stuck that one on and oh, I just can't stop looking at the paper, it's so pretty. When you do a pocket, the internal piece doesn't need to go all the way to the bottom. You just want it to be maybe half an inch inside the pocket to secure the hinges and make sure your paper isn't going to bump. So there is our little pocket with our thing on. These pockets I'm not actually going to fill with photo mats. If there are leftover pieces of the ephemera, of the cut parts of the paper, I might slot them in just because the person that I am um, considering giving this to is quite crafty themselves so they could use it but I'm not going to create photo mats because the way this is these could be copies of birth certificates death certificates marriage certificates all that information all that evidence that you have of your family history can go into these pockets and they're 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 chunky pockets like I could put all of these cards in they're probably not gonna here they are like there's 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 room and we've got this gusset which means you can fill these and it's not going to overstretch the pad the pad <laughs> the, the pack oh, wow sorry well that's a hardy wardy today i have exactly the same setup for this paper so i have the pocket and pocket and the back of it i have the flaps and the flaps and somewhere i have the backing piece why do I not have the backing piece? Please tell me that I didn't cut that up and use it for something else. I'll stick these on, try and find the backing piece, and I'll get back to you. Okay. So we have the first flap with the butterflies and the pocket, and then the second one with the flap and the pocket. Now, our back piece I decided to use the dark green just to be a different look and then we have now mm -hmm, I said eight but I put the other one together to get all the measurements and things so that I cut everything at the same time and ten fit so I have ten which are five yep five by six and a half and I then have one piece which is four by six and a half to go on the back so this dark green you aren't going to see very much of it and ordinarily i would do my paper saving trick but i want to give the back some strength i want to make sure these flaps are held down with some strength so i'm using a very thick piece of green it's much thicker than the light green for example um to put on the back to give that some real um strength Using the cloud glue as well will help because that ensures 
that it dries so it's amazing this stuff if you're looking for strength this not only um gives you a little bit of wiggle time which is difficult in some projects i will admit i don't like using this in all projects because you do get the wiggle time and it's just oh come on so if i'm doing a full mini album i don't really like to use this often because um it, it, it does take longer to stick and i will move the bit of paper and i won't notice and rah. so <laughs> as you may have seen in the oh which video was it i've done a video recently it would have recently come out i will link it up here for you um <laughs> where magrat was was up here sniffing at things and she trod on something and it moved the bit that i just stuck down uh, <laughs> And I started panicking that it would uh, stick down without me doing it. But yeah, so I'm going to stick this back piece on and then I'm going to stick these on. I'm going to put this whole bit in fast forward because, you know, it's going to be exactly the same process going down. But you can watch how I do it and then I shall be back. Okay, so when you are doing a waterfall, you can hide the hinges behind. But I'm not going to because I want this back piece to add strength. So we're going to start with the first piece of our waterfall and these have a half inch flap. I'm just making everything nice and flush so I can burnish. Um, we have a half inch flap for our waterfall. And with that, what you are going to do is burnish all of them. And that's where we're going to stick our glue. And we want these to be as straight as possible. So when you burnish your fold line, try and make sure it is the straightest you can get it. Because if one of these is wonky, your entire waterfall might sit wonky, um, which you don't want because it's very visibly obvious um, where you've got, especially with this, where you've got a contrasting colour in the background. So what I'm going to do, I am going to, I've measured these out. So we've got about three quarters of an inch either side. So all I'm going to do is put glue on that and come down half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the top. So it looks like we've got the same border all the way around. And then the next one, I'm just going to glue that tab directly up against the first one. Always fold down and check it straight before you burnish. And I'm just going to carry on doing that. So glue on the tab, stick it right next to the first one, put it down, check it straight. If it's straight, burnish it on, move on to the next one. It's, it's just the same process all the way down. And once you've made a few, it becomes second nature. So you just make sure you want to bend it down and check that it is all straight before you move on to the next one. Okie dokie. So I have added our two, four, six, eight, ten flaps. And you could leave it like this and leave this space at the bottom. I chose to cut another black piece that was it without the, the flap. Just so that I carried on this space for a picture like so and then you get you can't see it because it's hidden behind this one so it's basically mirrored by that one so you keep your nice edge all the way around but you have an extra slot here for a photo you don't have to you could take that way you could put a little pocket you could put a tuck spot you could leave it green I'm not going to leave it green because I like the idea of having this extra space but you could do that further down with a pocket or make it smaller and do a pocket. You could do it however you like. It is your folio. The side pieces of our folio are complete. In the centre, we are going to have a piece that comes out that opens up. And when we open it, I have put paper aside. When we open it up, I want this tree to be there now i'm not going to be able to do all of it so i'm probably going to sort of cut out some of it i don't know if i'm going to have it the same height as this or whether i'm going to have it a little bit smaller we shall see so i'm going to pop my folios out of the way now because they are complete we'll bring in our black hard and if I take this if I was to cut this out so that's 10 
what is our base of this? 10. So, then I want it to be. So I came from, say, here. That's cut off the top of the tree. But I think that is the perfect place to do it. Okie dokie. So I'm going to size my centre pages around this image. And then all I'm going to do is cut it down, keep the top and bottom strips because we know they're useful. Cut it in half and six and we are done for this video. Thank you very, very much for spending time with me today, guys. Keep crafting and I'll see you in part three. Bye.